season alive. Last time these two sides played with Richmond sitting above fourth on the ladder, round 12, 2006. It's been a while. So Sunday afternoon football. So much on the line for both sides and away. Soldo knocks it down to Martin. Couldn't take it cleanly. Ellis crashes on through. Bruce gets hold of him. And then Burgoyne, spooling ball, goes his way. Connor Glass to Isaac Smith. Thups the ball long. Jeray caught out of position. Holding the man, Richmond. Back here. Back here, Taylor. Taylor. Back here, please. Thank you. Come back on. Play on. Just held on to his arm a little too long. Rance wide to Asprey. Roughhead just trying to work his way into position there. Broad. Now for the Tigers. Driving ball for boot of Asprey up towards the wing. Good contest. Advantage. And here they go. Rioli. Little one. Flick up from Lambert. Finishes here. Butler. Cochin couldn't quite find the space he needed. Nankervis was in there. An opportunity now for the Tigers inside their forward 50. Little handball comes out. Once again, Nankervis had a ping and misses. Just to the right-hand side. Bright start for the Tigers. We spoke about that contest between the Ruckman. Who can get forward? Well, Nankervis got forward, got the handball. Missed the shot at goal. But that's the part of the ground that he'll want to be dragging McAvoy at every opportunity. Just earlier, we mentioned Taylor Duray playing that defensive forward role. He's gone to Rance, and they've backed Asprey in on Roughhead. Yep. And Curvis, three goals last week, looking lively early. Sicily, who we spoke about in the pregame, is having this new role at halfback. He and Gunston have been reinvigorated well. Dangerous sort of a kick. Does his job in the end. Bounces to Gunston, who have been speaking about it. And then and the sunshine on the Fire other on. side to Isaac Smith. Long ball, bit of a wait in the end for O'Brien. Front spot was Ellis, arrived, and then O'Brien was quick to his feet. Never lost sight of the football, bounced back to him, and then Langford's kick is poor. He really has, Scotty, got back to some of that form of 2014. Langford, I reckon, over the last month. Yeah, he turned it around last week as well, didn't he, against yeah. the Swans, hard and tough inside. Yeah, he's looked so much more ready to play and on the edge. Suits his game. He brought a lot to the Hawks in that year of 2014. Some would say he was a good reason as to why they were successful again. Covering the crossfield outlets at the moment, Hawthorne really well. They want, want Richmond to kick down the line. A little mini win when, it, when it's forced as it is. Well, they get that lead. Exactly as you say, now Curvis off hands out the back as Gunston's handball to Smith. Just barely got boot to ball. Gained good traction with the kick, though. Now the ground-level footy to be won. Ran straight at it. Roughhead met him solidly as well. Look at the Hawks. Jumpers around that. Shields went without the footy. In goes a Lambert. Picked it up. And here they get going through the middle again. An opportunity for Lambert to drive it forward. Good ball. Caddy takes the mark. Loves to play on. Couldn't get back on the right. They made him kick it on the left. And just didn't have the penetration in the leg. Picked up by Greek. Well, he's... Probably got a little more time than he thought there. Took the ball out and had a little space around him. Twice now Richmond have come through middle of the ground. Looked like they've had the numbers, had the Hawthorne defence under pressure, but uh, both times the defence has held up. So Van Soldo, McAvoy, Soldo, remarkable story. Will kick forward from Prestia, the one changed this week. Prestia in, Bolton out for the Tigers. Slap down from Caddy to Rioli. Now to McIntosh, back onto his left boot. Top of the square, all Hawks. Hold dead, hold dead. So Shields having a bit of trouble with the sun. How tricky is it, Scotty, early on a Sunday afternoon at the G? That's always a better problem than when it's raining, the sun, so. <laughs> Grimes, terrific. So many injuries, hasn't been bothered at all this year. Martin, superb little sidestep, and then the kick to half forward ends up with a skipper playing his 250th. Rough end. Tough bounce for Langford. Burgoyne fixes it up, gives it back to Langford. Mitchell quickly to Burgoyne. Prestia got in the road. Burgoyne, little kick to McAvoy along the ground. Shields, Sicily, now O'Brien. The Tigers are certainly on at attacking the man with the footy here at the moment, Scotty. They look pretty urgent, don't they? Yeah, they do. Both sides are pressuring really well. It's just who can be cleaner going forward. OK, well, here's an opportunity to go forward. You talk about the cleanliness of that. Not so good for the Hawks. Brandon Ellis, his 100th consecutive game today. What a streak it is. And... Since coming from the Calder Cannons, one of the more professionally prepared players is Dion Prestia. Speaking of the Calder Cannons, back. And a lively ball from Ellis out wide, cut off. 
by Burton. So Burton at half back. Swings the ball back inside, and the Hawks are going to get another opportunity, this time through O'Brien. O'Brien's little chisel kick is, well, it should have been good to roughhead, but it was not. Rance tidies up. A little bit of time for Grimes, went and found the football, got rid of a tackle, kick was smothered. O'Brien, not in Langford's direction, DeRay through traffic, feeds the handball wide, Henderson kicks it, goal. Offline. Both sides seem to be really getting forward of the footy. Um, I think the composure is going to be really important in this first quarter. Froston with the kick in duties for the Tigers. Good crowd in today, as you say. The sun's shining now, quite unbelievably, an hour or so again. Drenched in rain, the MCG. Up flies broad, couldn't win it in the air. Now he's going to have to have a crack at it at ground level, and Caddy there as well. Right in front of the MCC members here is Tom Mitchell having a ripping year. One of the Brownlow favourites. Looks like we may, well, we might lose another one if Merritt has a week for his. So we're running out of Brownlow favourites, Lee, these days. There's yeah. so many rules in the game. Can't do much these days. That's off Grig on the full. Thank you. Hold there, short. Hold short. So Langford, who was terrific last weekend against the Swans. Agitated Jared McVeigh more than once. Long ball. Chance though for Lambert. Read it well and then the short ball intercepted. Charging at the footy and then it was Hardwick. Sets it up for Howe. Howe's kick, not as he would have liked. Navan Solda, Navan Marich's cousin. Good story. Gives it off and broad. Long ball. A couple of players in good form on the other side. Burton and Martin. And then Martin over the top just puts it to the run of McIntosh. A bounce. He's got a chaser, he knew it, and he unloaded the football to half forward. In the sun on the half forward flank, out of sight, is Whitecross, sent it back inside. Hardwick's got a bit of a problem. A couple of Tigers doing the tackling. Drop the footy, Lambert. Vantage called, play on, and Caddy will kick the opener at the punt road end. We talk about it a bit, Brian, half forward looking back to the city. Not sure whether the sun played a role there or not, but few fumbles, Tigers mopped up, cleaned up, get the first. Yeah, good effort from them. They've been threatening. And as Scotty pointed out a couple of moments ago, just neither side has been that clean when they've entered their 50. They haven't been able to find targets. And that time, Richmond able to get on the end of something. He took the turnover. Neither side has actually been very precise taking the ball into their forward 50, but the... Turnover, geez, it was a good advantage. There was a couple of Richmond players that well forward of the ball, got the reward. Umpire Justin Smith to let it rip in the middle. The three umpires today, Justin Smith, Lee Fisher and Robert Finlay in charge of this big game on a Sunday afternoon at the MCG. Gunston with the highest oh, tackle. Richmond. And the evidence clear That's there. there. And the free the with Miles. A packed Richmond on, forward 50. Really difficult to find something, so the hoist high, hoping for something in the air, and only Sicily, who clutched at his back. Soldo's is going to be the only big target there at the moment. He's just got to drop it on his head. There's no way he's going to be able to move into it. Well, Dustin intercepts and then just goes low, doesn't find the man he wanted, and they can get away with this hook. Sicily to Burton, under pressure, Smith. Quickly to Howe, intercepted again. Here's a chance for the Tigers on the rebound. Martin involved again. Castagna, Martin, quick kick forward. Well, White Cross did enough initially, has time to pick it up. Gets away from Soldo the first time. Quick handball over the top is okay. Brand, they're running out of space here to get the result they want. You know what, Ed Lee? Right now, to me, it's really evident already that Hawthorne just are lacking that little bit of composure without Hodge there, I reckon. Yeah, just today, a little bit, a little bit shaky with ball. But both sides, to be honest, a bit, look a bit shaky with ball in hand at the moment. The defensive pressure's are in control. The brashness of Sicily finds Langford. Now Henderson interchange in the background there, as you can see. Punch to the boundary safely. Tigers are happy about that. Cochin congratulates Broad on his effort. It's going to be hard yakking for that one big Richmond forward. When you've got to kick the ball long and high, there's going to be... They'll be taking Sider and Nankervis, take the body and allow the Sicily type player to be jumping third up. Richmond are just going to prevent that somehow. Soldo, that man down there at the moment, is Nankervis in the ruck. 
Langford, Gunston, kick out of the pack is good, gains some territory. Asprey hard over the footy. Didn't really want to release it because he wasn't Fine sure whether he had the outside winners. I think Dion Crescia looks like he's made his way just at stoppage to Tom Mitchell and trying to get four of them in transition. McAvoy did well. And then off the ground, Caddy just happy to try and buy some yards. So what's the thinking there with Prestia doing that, Scotty? Obviously to cut his influence at the stoppage, where he's very good, and then try and run him actually out of position, so get him forward. And, um, yeah, it's been a bit of cat and mouse in the first ten minutes. So both sides missing one of their stars today. Out from last week goes Luke Hodge. Jack Revolt misses his second. Langford quickly by hand, shields, and then... A man that just has attracted the football in the brown and gold. Tom Mitchell around the corner. Hard tongue, beaten to it in the end. Miles got involved. Shields to Roughhead. Bouncing ball at full forward. Geray just left it behind. So too Burgoyne. Normally clean off the ground. Couldn't quite. Miles taken high. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Never kicked a goal. In his very short AFL career. Couple of games. This is third. Sure, all the players at Hawthorne will be aware of that BT. Yep, you watch them come from everywhere. Uh, how are you aware of those sort of things, Scotty? Uh, you get you get plenty of notice during the week about the guys up and kick goals. And, uh, <laughs> they'll get around him if he does kick it. Just his third game. Played in round two and three. Had a problem with his knee this year. Back into the side. And he's kicked his first goal in AFL football. And the skipper was the first man to him, so a miles for the, the Tigers out there today and a milestone for Taya Miles for the Hawks. They all got around him because the defenders, the four defenders thought too yeah. far to run. We'll stay back here and just say, well done, mate, from afar. Just thumbs up from the <laughs> defensive 50. Surely you've got to make the effort on the, on the first goal, even if you are at the other end, especially early in the game, mate. Well, yes, maybe. Taylor Miles, of course, kicking the goal. The son of Back Jeff Miles, who played at Collingwood West Coast. Might have played at another club as well, did he own? Geelong, was it? Um, anyway, his dad was a ripper. up the man, Richmond, Prestia. Hold, Liam. Here he is, Play the human meatball, Dion Prestia. To the left foot of Griggs. So he gets a good look at the punt road and he winds up and drops it right on the spot. Caddy underneath it now coming at the football. Gee, I reckon he might have got interfered with. Now Sicily, an opportunity to uh, get rid of the ball out of the danger zone. Back off hands, Grigg. Sees Asprey. He'll want to get rid of it. He does to Uli. He's happy to retreat too to Prestia. Low ball is good. So Edwards worked his way through 200 games and then puts this back into the sun. Drifting on down Corey Ellis. So he can have a look at his first of the afternoon and just extend that lead again to seven. That is a really hard angle, isn't it, where the uh, sun is directly behind the footy from this call, and it's a question who can actually sight the ball first when it comes out of the sun. Yeah, it is. I think that Dion Prestia kick there really set the play up, though. Hawthorne have got you know two extra spares back, so it was a great kick inside. Kicked his first goal of the year last weekend, Ellis. Well, starts off line and drifts back in, so a couple for the Tigers. Fair bit of work in the air, that football. Yeah, I think the uh, cheer squad behind the goals were disappointed early. By the end of it, delighted with the way the ball worked back. So seven-point lead is now the Tigers. Ellis responds to the Miles goal quickly. Caddy got the first for Richmond. We tune in the significance of this game. Tigers trying to bury themselves inside the top four. Hawks trying to keep their season alive. Jack Rewalt and Luke Hodge, what sort of input do you think they'll have today, Scotty? And what sort of input can you have from that position as a player? Um, just agree with the coach. I reckon if you're in the <laughs> coach's box, probably the safest bet. Yeah, exactly. Hard time. Out of the eye, diddle diddle. Long ball. Burgoyne trying to get rid of Foston. Jaray's there as well. The stiff arm by Foston was a good one. Find space for Grigg. Now the left foot of Hawley. He Hesitated and that cost him Thanks, Josh, a clean there. disposal. Play on. Sicily. White cross. Play on. He was going to go right back and they're coming from north, east, west, and south. 
the Tiger Tacklers. And Butler. Alice was short, ignored. But he still has the composure to look for and find Lambert. Out of kicking range for him. A lot of Hawthorne jumpers back. This is the kick. Now Martin, now he can wind and go. If he wanted to wheel and go, he can. How they let him do that, I'm not sure. Bruce came in, made the ball be kicked higher than he would have wanted, so that was a good result for them. Cotchen in low, on top of him with a tackle was how. And the ball is going to be paid to Hawthorne. You heard Smith say, dive on the ball. Look at Richmond are going to have to kick a few long goals. They get a lot, so many numbers back, Hawthorne. It's really getting shots from that 40 to 50 metres. That's the, that's the part of the ground you might be able to dominate a bit. Heard the umpire, Sir Edwards. A little tap in his direction was clever. His kick to Rioli super. Up on your request there, Lee. Well, I mean, the, basically, if you're kicking the ball from 60, 70 metres out and you're going to drop the ball, like, in this part of the ground, it's got to be a precise kick, because I think the Hawthorne height and their marking power in their defence would be a bit too good for Richmond if the ball's hanging in the air. Richmond's forward pressure's been fantastic early, too. They're the best in the comp at it, and seem to be putting the Hawthorne backs under a lot of pressure. So Daniel Rioli, three goals won last weekend, 18 for the season. This for the Tigers, third. No problem. Off to a good start, the Tigers. Some serious talent in the stands. Sir Rioli has been watching for the majority of the year. Lukoc, his first game out for a while. Jack Rebold's missing his second this afternoon. Yeah, and look at him press, Cyril, with... What Daniel did to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's used to seeing Riolis do yeah. remarkable things, I suppose, in his life, whether it's here at the MCG or back in the Tiwi Islands. I Daniel. thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Tough crowd to please, wouldn't it, Rioli fan? It's that Richmond pressure there, get the smother, force a turnover. They've done it a few times, and obviously Hawthorne liked to be really composed out of the back half, but Richmond has been able to speed them up a little bit. So Daniel Rioli... Getting a relatively easy one there. Soldo in the middle. Cotton was the meat in the sandwich. Burgoyne was part of that sandwich. But the smother by Castagna was powerful. And then Whitecross comes through and sends the authority. Greg and Miles in the end fighting over the same footy. And a ball up. As Pendles touched on a little bit earlier, both sides playing a little bit of cat, cat and mouse trying to get that number back. Sicily for the Hawks and Vlostone for the Tigers. McAvoy, good job. Down to Hartung, around the corner, looking for O'Brien. Had his back to the footy and Asprey out, did him probably. Now uh, Hooley at ground level, offhand shields. Handball went nowhere in particular. Did well Castagna to keep it alive. Might have been Lambert, in fact. Miles it was. So here goes Hooley. Gets it wide to Asprey. Under pressure, was cool, and is able to kick the ball long on the head of Martin. He's got the front spot too. Grand arrived late with the height, but Martin was in position A1. Was opportunity for Miles to slap it in the Ellis direction, but Connor Glass won the battle, knocked it forward, but Prestia was there. Butler tries the cute one over the top. It's going to work out. Clever to the skipper. It's played to Richmond strength, trying to run the ball through, trying to find that little break through the Hawthorne uh, zone there. But really, that a bit of holding on to the ball, taking the pressure from Hooley off halfback. And then, of course, the strong mark from Martin. He's been pretty accurate this year, Trent Cotchin. 13 6 coming into the afternoon. It's got the commentator's curse on it. Good. It's almost knowing where your numbers are. You always know Hawthorne are going to have more numbers in their back 50. So those Richmond numbers upfield have to work to link up and get involved to run the ball through the centre square. And that's they're going to be their, uh, their best scoring method. Certainly, Richmond have created the better quality opportunities at the moment. Sicily trying to get something happening off the back 50. Henderson to Smith. The long striding Isaac Smith. Boost looks back inside. High ball. Here comes Show and Makers. Just might have taken his ball off at the last uh, off the ball at the last moment. And Jaray had a shot. And missed to the left as well. So that was a good quality opportunity for the Hawks. Dylan Grimes. To Floston. Grimes had so many problems with his body in recent times, hasn't missed this year. 
Going back, having a think about it was McIntosh, and then just a little bit too much in the end. Ashbury and McIntosh and Martin will make sure the Hawks get held up. Jimmy? Yeah, as we look at Dustin Martin and BT, you mentioned how can you allow him to play on, but this has come into the game with, with that protected zone around the guy taking his kick. They wait for the umpire to come in, almost use him as a block, and they can gain that extra couple of metres to get the distance. Yeah, intriguing stuff. Alice Mitchell. Roughhead. Game 250. Long ball. Jeray underneath it. It travels the journey. So 21 plays nine with six minutes remaining here. Talk First. about who what experienced player Hawthorne might try and help out to bolster that back. White Cross is playing back there today, so maybe he's got a bit of that role to be the Hodge general. Through the hands of Caddy, White Cross, Henderson, quick kick, tumbled forward. And in the end, enough Tigers defenders around O'Brien to do the job. Looks like Richmond are resting in midfield at deep forward. Cochin here sitting right out the back of Hawthorne's zone. A couple of straight kicks in it. Five and a half to play before quarter time. All bounces okay in the end for Shields, and then it'll give back to Henderson again, just a hurried ball. Soldo has the height, takes it very comfortably in the end. So Soldo, as we said, 15 or so matches in the VFL last year, starting to find his groove. Hasn't played a lot of football at all. In fact, basketball, Scotty, his go as a junior. It's a few, a few of the boys out there. Ruffy as well, basketball junior. As you've seen there, though, trying to force that kick across the face of goal. It's because Hawthorne's so set up. Even now, they've got about eight out. Plenty of instructions in there at the moment. A lot of thinking as well. See Alistair Clarkson asking the opinions of the other coaches there about what's going on at the moment. Early days, but the Prestia on Mitchell matchup going pretty well for Richmond. Prestia's had six disposals. Mitchell's had his four, but that, I think they'd be happy with that matchup early days. You very rarely see Clarko with a phone, do you? He just yeah. talks to his coaches and they're the ones on the phone. Distribute the message to, to the according person, yeah. Hooley on his non-preferred side now. This is the two-on-one. Butler would do well to thwart this one. Couldn't quite get on the end of it. Kick around the corner, smothered. Now the Tigers can open him up through the middle if they can run with the footy. Edwards sends a long ball. Caddy bound inside 50. Caddy juggling Mark. Got it. Now he's got Martin, the runner on the outside. Well done on the mark. I think it was White Cross realising that. Koch and Long. And a free kick to Koch and they just panicked a little. Run at him and made it was electric from the Tigers. He played that well, Koch. You've got to take, almost take a step forward into the player coming towards you. Make him make a little bit of contact. So a little bit's the correct word. It was only a smidgen of contact but that's all the umpire needs when you're trying to spoil from the front spot as a, as a player in that situation you know that's all you have to do take one step forward get him to touch her it's an automatic free kick just need trent cotchin to be a little bit more aggressive with the way he kicks it here gets that got the goal tigers have got four in the first quarter and cotchin the beneficiary of all that but make no mistake the kick from the middle i think was it butler or just hang one of those anyway got it to Caddy and then Caddy was able to milk the Martin wide. Is it Edwards who took his time? It was Edwards. The hand it off. was. It was Edwards in the middle. So just looking to jump home on any little mistake from the Hawks and try and open them up behind the footy as a result. This is the goal set up. As soon as the ball was smothered, Richmond maintained possession, then the Hawthorne defence were. We're a little out of position, even though it took a free kick to get the shot at goal. Caddy, Ellis, Corey, Rioli and Cochin, the goal scorers for the Tigers. Taya Miles gets his first in the AFL football, the lone Thanks, guys. goal Thanks. scorer for the Hawks. Thanks, Will. Sicily's had the ball Thanks. ten times, leads all comers on the ground. Playing in his new role at halfback. And Curvis went looking for Corey Ellis, finds Basha Hawley. Foot race on the outer side, Edwards. Boundary line looks like it might have the win. That might have been a free kicker about two months ago, but I think the umpires have got a good balance at the moment. If, if actually, OK, players, no, don't kick towards the boundary line if you can help it. But there's much more leniency on that kick now than it was a couple of months ago. So McAvoy having a break. O'Brien this time doing the ruck work against Nankervis. 
Ball ends up with Gunston to Burgoyne. Just takes his time, gets around pressed here. And then sees a man he likes in the form of O'Brien. Again, the sun proving tricky. Young South Australian wearing that famous number. Puts it to about 50. Holding, Asprey, advantage, advantage. Morant's happy to take it. Takes a bounce. Little handball. Little bounce into the hands of Lambert over the top. Long ball now, Prestia. 20 metre ball. Finds Butler. Runs inside 50. Into the pocket it goes. Just too much for the skipper. He kicked the last. He won't get the next. Gee, they look dangerous at that end, don't they? The speed, isn't it? It's, yeah. not the, it's not the big, slow marking players. It's the speed of movement. That's the strength of that Richmond forward half. And uh, it's troubling Hall at the moment. Troubling Alistair a little. Yeah. Hold now, hold. Just to think, Lee, you used to be in that position. <laughs> yeah. Move it on. Play a, on. A difficult one to be in when your team's not quite getting it done. High footy here. Show and makers, good attempt to mark. Mitchell, sharp hands. Hartung. Mitchell again. Out the back, white cross. So the Hawks just trying to get themselves out of trouble. Hardwick with the finishing kick. O'Brien went. High tackle here. Richmond. It'll it's be dead. Miles. That's it, short. Handball's off and finds an opportunity with Broad. Broad sends it 50 metre bound. High footy in front, couldn't mark it. Play on. Hardwick was the player. Spills to Greg. Greg got the handball away. Butler smothered brilliantly by Glass. And the Tigers just looking for another opportunity. Butler around the corner, short ball. And it is Corey Ellis. Really feel Richmond wanting want this game fast. Hawthorne's only had 15 marks for the quarter. Here, they're averaging about 120 a week since the buy. So 15 gone. I think Hawthorne need to get control of the ball again, slow the game down a little bit, and get it back on their terms because it's very fast at the moment, which is suiting Richmond. Ellis, Corey, Hold. directly in front. Hold. Quarter closing out. Punt road in to arouse the Tigers behind the goals. Got his second. Same shape as the first. Right. Yeah. We go around the grounds. We've been speaking about how tight this match has been all afternoon. Jack Billings, two-point leaders when he kicked it. 30 seconds to play. Saints beat the Eagles. As a result, Bombers back into the eight. That's sort of a season, isn't it? Ellis gets his second. 5-4 to 1-3. 25-point leaders, the Tigers. Connor Glass to Brand. Happy just to send it back. And then Gunston. What about going inside? Stays in the sunshine. Smith at full stretch. Every kick out of that back part of the ground seems to be under pressure for Hawthorne. The target seems to have not much space. Richmond defence. They've had 10 inside 50s, Hawthorne, but only for four scoring shots. So the Richmond back six has been pretty good. 10 for Hawthorne, you said, Lethal? No, yeah, no 10 for Hawthorne, only 12 for Richmond. It's a difference in who's converting from their times forward. Richmond much better. And every time you see the Tigers go forward, you expect Jack Reebok to be leading somewhere. Get used to players playing roles, but not there today. Rioli, brilliant at ground level. Gave it off. Rick, he's given it back. Howe, Shield, in trouble. Boot to ball, clever enough. Here's a chance for Burt. Well, fumbled again, Howe. Holding, Richmond. Doesn't have it. Rioli. Have a look at this, guys. Now, this is a... For me, that's a bit of a sling, but because there's no injury in it, yeah, no, the head didn't hit the turf. Yeah, there's, there's no result, there's no penalty, no one even talks about it. But to me, it's the same thing that everyone's talking about. It's uh, we're in a tricky environment, Brian. I reckon. Do we want to penalise the tackler, or are we just penalising the result of the tackle? Well, it is a little bit, but it's a simple principle: you get more for murder than attempted murder. <laughs> same principle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't quite uh, looking at it in those terms, but... Uh... <laughs> in legal terms. <laughs> the result does matter. Lethal's uh, mind wanders. Uh, opportunity here for the Hawks. Mitchell, sharp 
hands to Gunston on his non-preferred. Looking for Sean Makers, did well. Grimes out the back, little pokey handball, found Floston. Siren sounds. Good quarter of football. The Tiger faithful are here in big numbers today with their home game at the MCG. And they will be loving what they have seen in this first quarter. 5-4-34, the Tigers, Hawthorne, 1-3-9. It's the Tigers at quarter time by 25. Justin Lepage there looking for somewhere there where they hang his coat. Having a bit of a giggle. There is Nan Curvis. Ready to go, second quarter here. Richmond by 25. MCG on a Sunday afternoon. No better place to be. Soldo out of the middle. Roy Burgoyne, the superstar. Henderson. Whitecross got one high. high. Hawthorne. And it'll be Brendan Whitecross at half back. Yours. We've really struggled to go forward with authority from this position so far today. Isaac Smith haven't been able to penetrate the corridor at all, really. Always been forced wide like we're seeing now. McAvoy to Burton. Burton pushed back, or is he? Little handball over the top to Mitchell. Do well to get themselves out of trouble here. Mitchell's creativity to Hartung, and there's the turnover. Boys have been talking about that. The little fend off in the middle. Tigers haven't got the numbers here, though, even though Nan Curvis, the tackler, is holding it up and did well. Okay. Nominate Ivan Van Well, Soto was good there, just knocked it the second time in the direction of Martin. Kicking in danger. Kicking in danger. No, he didn't land his back. To Trent. Hold Daniel. Sean Burger in such a nice play. You sort of believe him when he's pleading his case. <laughs> Long ball again to half forward. Hardwick takes a terrific grab. He and Sicily fought for it in the air. And a couple of this new breed for Hawthorne doing their thing at half back. Play on! Play on up 15! Play on! Sicily now over his shoulder and a long ball down the line. Plenty of tall timber for Hawthorne. McAvoy, Dean ah, O'Brien worked it out well. Mitchell. Runs into trouble, went inside, nothing was doing. Rance put the tackle on. Skipper picks up the loose ball, back to Rance. Clever little slap to Broad in the end. He finds himself on hands and knees. McAvoy becomes a rover. Got tackled, got rid of the football. Smith, as soon as he grabs hold of it, gets taken to ground. Which is pressure again, yeah. isn't it? Really to come forward and lay tackles. It's putting oh, Hawthorne under a lot of pressure. Hold on, Don't hold. So Prestia and Mitchell. They stand about together. Howe goes and wins a football. Smith works at about 30 metres to half forward. Almost for O'Brien. Hooley arrives. Big tackle is on. And Dustin Martin ensures the ball stays put over the shoulders. In the back. Sitting on his back. Mark's here. We've seen that. He dragged it in. If it wasn't in the back, it probably would have been holding the ball, but he lied it little. Full weight on his back. A little rough head. Burgoyne there. Went for the left foot the other way and it actually spun the opposite of what he thought. Rioli couldn't hold it. Picked up by Henderson. He got enough height on the foot. He is helped through by Hooley. When we talk about the pin arm tackle, because if you don't pin both arms, these players are so good at still being able to flick the ball out even when they look like they've been caught cold. So, but... Oh, gee, though, you can't pin the... Arms though, Lee. Well, you can pin it, but just don't make sure the head doesn't go to ground. But if you don't pin the arms, that's the problem, isn't it? Be nice. I'll get rid of the ball. And yeah. put a pillow under them as you take it to the ground. <laughs> There's Flossstone into the middle. Dangerous kick. Dusty Martin there off hand. Spills. Burgoyne arrives. Martin the pressure now. Langford's there as well. Hooley did well. He'll have to get rid of it here. Burgoyne just went and stole it. Gave it to Roughhead. 35 and missed. Good effort from the talk from the Hawks to force the turnover. That's where Hawthorne needs the burger and impact on the game. Every now and again he intervenes in the game and Hawthorne just needs someone to run through the midfield, kick a long goal. And Curvis crashes the pack. Lambert robes it well. Went looking for Martin with the handle. He'll find him in the end, but Martin won't be able to grab hold of it. Gunston was quick. And then intercepted by Caddy. Kicked the first goal of the afternoon and now just working on the defensive side of the wing. To Prestia, to Castagna. Measures his kick. Need enough. Lambert continued to run. Into the pocket he goes. It's a terrific kick. Now Edwards looks inside. He's come off his line. Called to play on and does. Might try and finish it off. It's 
Well, a well-weighted ball in the end, and then Curvis, who's a lefty, like might be tempted. Hit three last week, so he's got the rhythm. Yep. Yeah, that's there. Hold there now. Mark's right here. You're on the line, straight towards me. Play on. Rolls around. He went one step. He could have probably gone two or three and opened up the angle, but I don't think he's had many shots in, of that nature in his career, Toby Nankervis. The taller you are, the less steps you take, just in case oh, okay. yes. yeah, you get run point. down or overstep it. Scotty, what do you think? Uh, you think that the big guy should just handle, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> two on one here, Burton. Did well between he and Isaac Smith. Just uh, down to you, Jimmy. It's right in front of you at the moment. They love to get the ball in the hands of Sicily off half back. Would you agree? Yeah, I think probably because he's kicking penetration. He can hit that extra 10 metres uh, more than others, but he also backs himself in, so they like his creativity. Probably why they give him from kickouts. Yeah, he, he was almost guaranteed to get it in the half back if they got time. They love it in his hands, that's for sure. Here he is. Bit of a target, though. And out of bounds on the foot. Richmond's forward pressure has been sensational today. Hawthorne have got an extra back, but they can't find the free player and use it to get through. Richmond's forwards have closed that down, really leaving Hawthorne's loose play right out the back. If they want to go backwards, they'll allow that, but they won't allow anything else. Have a look at this. The ball's gone down the tunnel a long way. This is a rarity in football. I remember games, Lee, where you'd lose a half a dozen footies a game. Now, we, I can't remember the last time... Over the fence of those suburban grounds. footies been lost. Yeah, that's true. At a game in the AFL. In fact, I don't think there's been one, home that I know of. Just a little thing. I know you're probably not that interested, but... No, I'm, I'm with you. I like it. A bit of a redevelopment in Geelong. A few disappeared with some uh, local workers, I think. Perhaps the 100-metre stands around the grounds these days have made a difference. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to kick it out of the stadium. For a stone. They'll challenge anyone that can kick it out here. I don't think it's possible. Flostone through the middle, missing the target. Rioli, a second chance. Brand there as well. Brewster arriving with Prestia. And now the Tigers, Miles. Henderson in the tackle. Grigg had to get down low. Showing makers there. Umpire said he was already low. Hardwick feeding it wide. Sicily, the kicker, finds Hartung. And he's happy too, Hartung. Takes on his man and has the win. Might take on Soldo too. Now drive the ball. Langford in the pocket. Grants, as he has a tendency to do, he arrived at just the right time. And Miles taken extremely high. <laughs> he's got a good knack of fighting the high tackle, doesn't he? <laughs> well, Henderson had it delivered to him. Stopped dead and then taken to ground immediately by McIntosh. When Hawthorne are coming forward, Richmond have got obviously Rance just positioned wherever he wants because Duray is sitting on him, but Rance has given him little to no respect and he just positions beautifully to the footy. Soldo, just a little pause in his movement there, ends up with the Hawks getting their hands on the football. Shields to Henderson. Sean Makers, no touch in the first term. Can he get a free kick here? Thank you, Dylan. First touch of the afternoon for Ryan, Ryan Schoenmakers. Margin is four goals. Shane. Thanks, Nick. A little pause in his run. Kicks effective. He gets his first. Hawks get their second. Back to three goals. If you're an interested watcher of run-ups, we've seen... Josh Kennedy from the Eagles with a stutter. It's rare you see a complete pause in the run-up with a footballer. Well, it is. It's almost a stop and roll on again. <laughs> it is, and everyone's different. It's about finding your the thing that you're comfortable with, I think, is probably the most important thing, but yeah. I don't think you can be comfortable with that. The centre bounces. This clearance is where Hawthorne are going OK. They're 12-7 uh, up. And that that has been the Richmond defensive pressure has to be really good because that first hand on the ball has largely been Hawthorne. So back to a three-goal margin now. Play of the Tigers. Martin. Play on. Again, Hooley didn't want to take possession. Rough head, probably obstructed just a little by the umpire. Prestia tried to back out. Of the tackle then from Howe. No, no 
bit prior to the result in the end. Not a massive number of tackles. It's 24 to Richmond and 21 to Hawthorne, but already players are expecting the tackle, so they tend to be just wanting to get rid of it really quick. I know the tackling pressure's coming quick. Beautiful tap by Nan Curvis down the throat of Castagna, who was standing right in his left hip pocket. Martin, the smother. Glasses there for Hawthorne at half back. Need to be solid here, the Hawks. Mitchell kept it moving forward. Good play. Howe had a hand in there as well. Here's the fleet foot of Bruce with a little chisla. Finds his man in Miles. Miles plays on and gets it to Roughhead. And the 250 gamer will get a good look from 40. Incredibly quick hands there by Hawthorne to get through. I wasn't sure who did that last handball, but three, four quick handballs and they're out. I think Mitchell was involved in one of them. There's a bit of a little left, you know, just below the left eye there. For Ruffy as well. 250 games, 518 career goals. And the Richmond Punt Road in cheer squad loving the result of that one. Remarkable lead this year. Ruffy's played more game time than any other Hawthorne player. Considering his year last year, it's just phenomenal, isn't it? Oh, it's great, uh, great. Everyone's really happy. He's back. I find that Healthy, fit well. It's a staggering result, isn't it? Just extraordinary. Hope that he'd play again. Just amazing to think he's hardly missed a beat this year. Quick hands from Preston, missed his mark, and then Van Curvis did well. Worked it back to Ellis. Hand in there from the Hawk in the form of Burton. And Curvis, 12 games at the Swans over a couple of years. Emergency in the grand yep. final last year, just seven matches last year. But he has been somewhat of a cult figure as a Tiger. Oh, he's really added something to the Tigers. There's no question about that. A bit of a missing link that they've been able to fill home. That man there, Nan Curvis. They've recruited well. Hampson, he's been injured all year. Marich's body's let him down. He's filled the yep. void. And he's only young. He's 30 games into his career. He's a young player, so a really good get for them. Gunston to Shields. Drives the footy really long. Rants a late arrival. And tough it was. Floston was taken high. And we'll get the three in the back pocket. They release to the opposite side, which is the preferred way. They've got the loose. Hooley's run really hard, but he's ignored. Now it's down to Butler to win this one-on-one. -on -one. Can't afford to let Hardwick win it, and he didn't. Now he'll need to get it off. Creative work to get rid of it by foot somehow. Alice is there. Hartung was bundled out of the way. Alice went try to get it again. Greg, little tap out of there. Shields on the fringes. Tigers, look at the jumpers everywhere at the moment. Handball through the middle from Miles. Got it back to Caddy. Caddy deep ball. And they blast from half back. Castagna, he's got to beat Sicily in the one on one. He turned him inside out. He went for the second one. One might have been enough. You can't send two in the Frisbee. One would have been enough, home. He was certainly burning his two, mates. He actually. Uh was going to make this the individual goal of the year was a low percentage to skid it through on that angle. So Ned Curvis leads O'Brien and just knocks it in the Langford direction. He must be full of confidence from last week. Castagna kicked three last week and he was just yeah. hungry for more. He said, I'm going for this one. Thank you. Speaking of uh, Castagna, he's called George after George Castagna. Here from Seinfeld. Seinfeld in town at the moment. And Curvis slapped in the Martin direction, tackle. Incorrect disposal. That was an accident. That was an accident. Oh, don't give away the free. Thank you, Hawthorne. Hawthorne free. It was an accident. Daniel, but over it here. Stunned him. Mark's here. Play on. Meanwhile, Daniel Howe happy just to keep on rolling. Rough head, flies in front, not quite hard tongue, off his knee perhaps, towards the boundary, and then. Jeray happy to see it over. Lee brought up the clearance numbers just earlier with Richmond only having seven to Hawthorne's 15. But the great thing is Prestia has four of those, so not a complete uh, negative role on Tom Mitchell. And Curvis gets the benefit of doubt there, Scotty, because he's a ruckman. It was an accident. Absolutely. Over benefit six out for the rucks. <laughs> right, oh, Brand, Burton, Shields cruising through the MCG and then just held up McIntosh. Does a little Dustin Martin, goes searching for his skipper. Well, he does to Martin's Langford. Well done, the Tykes. Martin over the top caddy. Got a couple of runners. 
finds his man, Lambert. Well-weighted kick for Stagner. 30 out directly in front. Can't believe he's thinking of passing that. He does, gives it off. Now it's up to Caddy to finish off. Slightly closer, but uh, well, it's more changed, of an angle. It's changed the kick completely, Lee. Yeah, now the ball yeah. has to be perfectly guided onto the boot where he could have used his natural sort of arc of the footy. Yeah, that might have been because he thought he boot his teammates the previous one, BT. I better give it off. <laughs> so Caddy got the first of the match. Hawks have got the only goal in this term. Sean Makers was the man who kicked it. Caddy. Well, tricky kick. Drifts to the wrong side of the upright. 19 point lead, the Tigers. Just quickly, guys, the Hawthorne doctor is just checking out uh, Henson there with his shoulder and neck. Hold behind, hold. After that collision with Nankervis. It's Jimmy. Sicily. Yours. Big ball from fullback. Good kick in. Rough head. Hard tongue. Lower and harder than was Cochin. Brandon Ellis there as well. Gunston Grigg. Falls nicely for him. Centering ball here. Tigers danger again. Prestia did well. Got it to Edwards. Edwards on the left hand. Went to Caddy. Sicily there as well. Somehow Caddy just trying to bullock his way out his court now. Did he take them on? Umpires ruled that it was pinned. So he's very lucky. Nominate. Back this way. McAvoy won the tap. No decisive win through the legs of Shields. Burton had it. Grabbed from Prestia. Tried to back his way out of the tackle and then got clubbed by a couple. Caddy gets involved. Still no clear win. Finally, Shields put the ball. Miles. Right out, spot at the right time will kick from about 45 or 6. At that stoppage too, Richmond had so many loose players behind the play. The one thing Hawthorne couldn't afford to do there was quick kick it out. And they've done that and then the loose players just gobbled it up. There's an element of players don't want to kick it towards the boundary because they know it's risky and therefore these, these situations do present themselves a bit more. Yeah, certainly being coached to not kick it towards the boundary because you know in your back half you're going to be penalised. Just his fifth game of the year, Miles. Kicked a goal. In the first game he played against the Dogs, won't add to it here, it's going to fall short. Killed easily by McAvoy, so some easy chances from Caddy and now Miles, 18 points creeps to 20. So delicately poised this game here at the moment. Well, that wide, hard wick, first to get hands to it, rough head on his favourite side, a spearing bullet up to Schoenmakers, who just paddles it out in front, couldn't quite get it to work. But it was nice work from the Hawks. And there's Utah Jazz superstar Joey Ingalls, who's a mad Hawthorne supporter, and of course has done a lot to help uh, Jared Roughhead too, during his illness, took him over to the States, the NBA Playoffs over there, provided the tickets along with assistance from Andrew Bogut. High footy inside 50. By the way, we're going to have a chat to Joey at half time. The new, what is he, $60 million man? Something of that nature. He's got plenty anyway. Here's Rance, and the Tigers have got plenty at the moment as well. Corey Ellis, a funny looking bounce. Now the left foot kick wide. Castagna's going to have to go over the top of Sicily. Couldn't do it. Played that well, Sicily, actually. Geez. Settling in there, defensive slot. He actually knew that he had to come back with Ellis, but don't get uh, don't get trapped. He made it a really good contest when he could have got caught in between quite easily. So McAvoy just slightly more agile than Soldo. Hawks win the football, then Smith leaves it behind. Pressure tries to go off the ground, ends up with Gunston. Under pressure was Henderson, tried to clear the area, not quite. Cochin, Prestia, Edwards clean at ground level. Around the corner, top of the square, Dustin dangerously lurks about the place. But was good, trapped the football, brought it back when Hardwick looked like he was about to disappear with it. Ellis to McIntosh, still a ball to be won. Well done, Brand. Handball away, Tigers at the fall of the ball. McIntosh, back he goes, broad, pulls the kick. Heard the umpire, off hands and... Well, never really given a chance underneath that, I think, is Ellis. Caught between a couple of Hawks, kicked a couple of goals already this afternoon, Corey. Ivan, Ben, back this way. So the Tigers really applying the pressure here on the Hawks at the moment. Cochin. 
You heard the call clear. Here's Martin. Back to Cotchen. Can he get good penetration off one step? He has. And he's got it bending the right way just a metre short. Sicily. Always wonder why the umpires give them extra metres in defence. If you ask for a couple of extra metres on the boundary line up forward, you'd be told to no. McAvoy. And over the line, out of bounds. Any reason for it? Pendles. Leniency for the defenders and Ruckman, just a sort of a broad rule. Yeah, it is a strange one, isn't it? You get an extra three or four metres. They say to you, oh, give him a couple of metres in the back line. At the forward line, you run out of your run-up because of the fence on the boundary, and they don't give you any more. It's um, unfair, I would have thought. Here's how. I've been worried about that for about 40 years, but... <laughs> Good to finally get nothing, this, you chat. Nothing's changed. I think the idea is that there's not a whole lot of space behind the goals and the fence. I think that's the, probably the principle. Here's the arm pin tackle again. Once again, the arm was pinned. Went to the ground without control. Hasn't in, in his head. So it won't be an issue. In danger. Straight back, Tom. Caddy. 60 metres out. Richmond by 20. Hawthorne with the goal through show and makers in this quarter and that's it for both sides in terms of goals Grigg wide handball pressed here looking for someone to give it off to out the back finds Caddy now he's got a runner in Grimes ignores that tries to chisel something in the hot zone there Hawks have got the numbers McAvoy couldn't pick it up Butler had a ping missed it's hard to find his space in there Hawthorne just get the numbers back so well it's just a matter of can you actually just kick a Freaky one out of a congestion because there's not much space to work in. Out there. What do you see, Scott, when you look down at these two sides going at each other? The Hawks work at the Smith. I think Hawthorne just need to find that control of the game again with their kick mark brand of footy that really sets them up defensively as well. Well, the Irishman left the football behind. Tom Mitchell gives a bit of support. Hartung receives a handball for him. Happy to go to Smith. All by hand this. Hardwick. Sicily. Now boot to ball. Boot to the skipper. Now to Glass. The Irishman in his third game brings it back. Neat ball in the end of Smith. Loves to run and kick long. Takes a bounce. Nothing obvious for him at the moment. Into space runs. Gunston and then McIntosh somehow got a hand to it. Asprey is good. Little kick to McIntosh. Ends up with Asprey again. All by hand again. Tiger's just working it around. Caddy. Little kick through the middle is good. Cochin paid the mark. So Cochin wanting to keep the ball rolling here because they know the longer they take, the less room there will be. Here's Lambert, immediately inside 50. Soldo, one-on-one -on -one here, did well the Hawks in front. Might have been Hardwick. Little one here from Butler. Goes with the left. And the mark is taken by Soldo. So Soldo, also one of those players that's never kicked a career goal. I wonder whether they'll get to the big man or whether there'll be big man bias from his teammates. He's taking plenty of time and using the full 30. Ivan Soldo for his first ever goal in footy. And they flock from everywhere. Look at the back line come. They are coming from everywhere for the first goal kicker. So Soldo breaks the deadlock, the mini deadlock that has been here in the second quarter in terms of goals kick one apiece. I remember speaking to Avant Maric about his cousin Avant Soldo. He said he was about 30 kilos heavier when he arrived at the club, had to shed a few pounds. He's done that. Hadn't had any real feel for the game at all, but just worked his way through the VFL. Now kicking goals at AFL level. There's two very talls in the Richmond team. They're Kervis and Soldo. Soldo, and they're, they're not going to take their too many goals, but um, they have to get a couple between them. So Soldo gets his first at AFL level, and the Hawks try and respond. Margin out to 27 points. Ellis, little one over the top, a bit of a wait for McIntosh. Oh, Mitchell couldn't arrive in time. So the shadows get longer at the MCG. <laughs> McIntosh in an area in the first term it was slightly complicated looking into the sun not so now Gunston in the last of the sunshine takes an important grab margin 27 just under three minutes to play before half time goal apiece in this second term Sean Maker's got one for the Hawks Soldo 
The lone goal for the Tigers is Mitchell. Works around the place, back to Gunston. Now the long ball to half forward. O'Brien and McAvoy. McAvoy had a fair piece of it. O'Brien trying to do good things at ground level. Underneath all of that, he's broad. He comes away with a football, and after all of his good work, he comes undone. So last two and a half minutes of the half, Mitchell with the free. Short ball finds Shields. Slow movement here. Not a lot happening for the Hawks. Gives the ball back to Mitchell. Now Mitchell penetrating ball inside forward 50. McAvoy was there. Punched away by Rance. The counter attacks on here for the Tigers. The little one for Miles. Over the top to Dusty. Here they go. They've got the runner forward to the footy. Dusty forgot to look at the right time though. And now Edwards and Rioli. Rioli not much to kick to now. Has to create something really long. And he does. Good effort in front by Burton. If Dusty had looked up when he had the footy, he would have realised there was really a great opportunity for them to kick it in the goal square, basically. I think it might have been Castagna on the run. He had plenty of territory, didn't he, on his Northorn opponent. Wasn't seen or perhaps he didn't feel he could get the ball to him. So, last 90 seconds of the opening half, the Tigers 6-8, the Hawks 2-5. No Luke Hodge, no Jack Revolt, Jared Ruffhead in his 250th. Hawks, quite simply, need to win to keep their season alive. Richmond, a win would have them wedged in the top four. McAvoy couldn't quite, cruising on through miles. Tackle came, Presti was a tackler, brought him to ground. I think in these stoppage situations here, I think Hawthorne need to engage, really make sure they've engaged Richmond's defenders. Their plus one's creating chaos for Hawthorne to move the ball through. So McAvoy, this time against Nankervis. He's got a battle throughout the afternoon against he and Soldo. Edwards, quick hands in the end. Martin went low, clever. Well, getting rid of the football was Miles. Hawks end up with it. This time it's Roughhead. Feeds it on through. Going to get it again. Tackles on from Hooley. Got boot to ball. But again, the Tigers, this time through Broad, just close things down. Martin. Yours. With that unbelievable kick as his 45 meter ball didn't get above about 10 feet just a bullet wasn't it finds his man and now Cochin got some tall timber Soldo and then Curvis ball spills in front all Hawks at the fall of the ball how ball drops between a couple Mitchell finds it again showing makers got a few to beat ball kind to him in the end Cochin under the loose ball and then Howe on top of him. Oh, I didn't see anything. Got Ranch just sitting by himself in 450. And that's what's Hawthorne keep handballing the football because they look up and they just see Ranch standing by himself. So ball up here and then Curvis. Little knockdown Bruce. Clock's gonna wind down though here. And they won't get another look, so that will not count. Intriguing quarter of football, just a goal apiece in that quarter. Richmond by 27. Jimmy, what did you think of the Richmond mids in, in that quarter? Yeah, BT. They're getting forward, but the Richmond defence is just holding it. I'm not sure about the delay on Rant's situation. I think they have to be trying to use Ruffin or someone like that to make Rance actually defend an opponent because he'll just keep playing off delay. Low scoring afternoon so far. Tigers by 27 as we start the third term. Here's a man for the moment. So often for Hawthorne, driving the ball long. Sean Makers got one for the afternoon. He's within range. That's a really good result from the centre bounce clearance there. Hawthorne only had four forwards at that clearance, uh, forward of the ball, and for Burgoyne to get through and find a Sean Makers forward was an incredible kick, but you know, really good spacing by Hawthorne forwards. 15. Made a bit of a divot in the MCG. Sees numbers. Can he add to that bottom number? Can a one become two? Showing makers, he's kept it to the near side. Good sign was the centre clear from Burgoyne. He uh, he can really have an influence on the game. Hasn't been involved a whole lot. Had a bit of the ball, but he can just really open it up at times. They need a really good quarter for him to try and uh, wind Richmond back in. On, play on. So here's Asprey, the man that Jimmy Bartell was talking about just before this quarter got underway. Throw it in. If you've just joined us, the jumper that Richmond are wearing in support of the Alana and Madeline Foundation.
Foundation vision is that every child will live in a safe and supportive environment. You can make your donations at the amf.org.au website. At the back, Soto was able to make some sort of connection, although McIntosh didn't. Martin tries to wrestle the footy out. And some dark clouds looming in from the south as well. Should be OK in terms of rain, though. Not many in that shot, but the way I was looking, there was. Might be a different camera. <laughs> bit misty-eyed. Uh, Mitchell, little handball. <laughs> handball over the top from the Tigers. They're out. An opportunity for Nan Curvis to get it over the top. And running out of space there, the Tigers in the end, going towards this punt road end in the third quarter. There they are. I thought I was looking at an end that had some clouds. But uh, I was amazed when sunshine was given to me. So, although I wasn't sure whether I was here, whether this was live or not. Prestia, Cochin, fast hands, Tigers, McIntosh, the boy out of Pinjarra in Western Australia. Gunston now on the left boot. Knew he couldn't go in the middle, otherwise they would have been exposed. Had to kick the ball over his head. Bruce couldn't handle it. Floss Tone got it back to McIntosh. Great little kick and Prestia steady. Straight out, Luke. Just a completely different looking forward line without Revolt, isn't it, Lee? Yeah, well, as he's only, it's fairly small at the best of times, but without Revolt, you've not got to use the big Ruckman in there as the, as the one real tall. So Burton has the win over Caddy. Just a little bit too much on the kick for Josh. And then Schoenmakers had a shot moments ago from about 25 out. Put it to the left. Tumbling ball forward. Easy pickings for Rance. He just continues to roll. Gives it off to Lambert. Going to get it back again, Rance. Runs through the circles. Man loose at half forward. Castagna just too far out to score. Caddy provides the lead. He'll be on it. So has one for the afternoon, Josh Keddy. Uh, Caddy, Tigers fans, I hope he can add to that. Doesn't look completely confident initially and now settles down to take the shot. All come from Rance, just not having an opponent that he has to really concern himself with. Reads the ball in the air. Intercept mark, they're off. It's coming back a little and fading late again, so... 6-9 now for Richmond. We all talk about the Tigers but, and, and the Hawks, but what have the Tigers done to curb the influence of the Hawks here today, Pembrey? Pembrey, do you think? I think they've just put pressure on them every time they get the footy. Uh, uncontested mark chain starts. They seem to be able to speed them up. And they forced them into... Hawthorne have only taken 40 uncontested marks or it, like so far for the game. So Richmond have done a really good job of shutting those options down. Grimes... Threw it out to Prestia. Shields did well in the body position. Hooley trying to bounce off the Burgoyne tackle. Grimes now, little handball. Opportunity Lambert had to go the tackle instead on Howe. Free kick will go the Hawks' way. So perhaps you're in a better position here to launch some sort of attack. They found a bit of space. Glass has got on the end of it. Bounces in front of Edwards. I'm not sure he knew about Edwards' running capability. High footy and Miles has taken a beauty. So Miles is going to get a look at another one here from 35 out, directly in front. Once again, though, it was Richmond's pressure there that forced a really hat kick forward, and Hawthorne get lucky on the back of that. I'm not sure why they're playing on as much as they are today. It's not usually a trait that Hawthorne show. Mum Carey will be watching on today. Jeff will be here. Sister Demi, of course, the partner of Mitch Duncan. Another sister, I think, is a dancer on a cruise ship. So they're very talented, the Miles family. Hurley to Rance. Speaking of talent, Rance to Grigg. And feeding it down the line, Rioli. A little slap inside. Couldn't take possession. Was clever enough to see Ellis was there. Ellis fed the ball back out. Wanted Edwards. Langford intercepted. Ends up with Edwards. Tigers on the march again. Edwards to Caddy. Lambert on the inside. Lambert takes a bounce. Runs inside 50. He doesn't blaze away. He finds Dusty. And to the cheers, Dusty kicks his first. Tigers have got seven. And you talked about the noise at the MCG yesterday. When the Tigers started to roll there, the punt road end started to get 
very vocal. One of their favourite sons puts through their seventh. 33 points to the margin now. It's a game high. That surge off halfback, that's been the part of the game where Richmond have just been far superior. Running numbers. As we see Dusty mark the ball, we highlighted this earlier. He almost waits for the umpire to come in close to the man on the mark. He's almost a block there for him, so the man on the mark can't get close enough to smother the kick. 19 games for Dustin Martin this year. He's kicked goals in 16 of those 19 games. And the Tigers, 33-point leaders here. Boy, when they counter-attack, when they have the opportunity to counter-attack, it hasn't been often, but they have gone for it, haven't they? Yeah, they certainly have. So uh, it's an intriguing oh, oh, next five minutes, I reckon, in this match. What do you reckon is the trigger point for them to want to go? I'm not really sure why they're going so much, but, um, yeah, as I said, certainly I think this next ten minutes is going to be um, really crucial. Big in the game. Tigers kicking the only goal so far off this third quarter. Doesn't look to be the best of watches. Jack Revolt, Luke Hodge, he's watching on two this afternoon. Hodge out for one. Jack missing his second in a row. And Curvis had the height advantage over O'Brien, knocked it to the ground. Gunston. The man, Hawthorne. And tackled Hold by there. Nan Curvis, who's got Hold. great appetite at the moment for the contest in the football. But Gunston here goes searching in a very crowded forward line. In the end, Broad knocks the ball to ground. Ellis has the ball bounce away from him. Hartung has lost it and it bounced back to Ellis, and then he got taken in a tackle instantaneously. Seven nine two six inside fifty count, just two between the sides. Richmond twenty five, Hawthorne twenty three. Sixteen scoring shots to eight as Caddy. Looking for Koch and missed him. Castagna beautifully to Lambert and then out in front of the running Butler. Bounces perfectly for him. Gets away from Whitecross. Over the top again. Dusty gets his second. And the Tigers get noisy. It's a wave when it rolls, the Richmond juggernaut. You talked about it before, Brian. When they go, they've got that fleet put it a running brigade. It's like when Hawthorne make an error off half back and it's like they're signed to just go and try and expose them over the back and they've done it. I reckon they've done it ten times in this game and they've probably had eight scores from the ten goes. They've been electric when given the opportunity. Here they go. We've seen this Richmond scoring pattern. Run the ball through the middle of the ground. This is one occasion where the Hawthorne defence got caught up field a little bit then. The over-the-top goal again to Martin. Kick the last three here, the Tigers. The eighth time that Dustin Martin has kicked multiple goals in a game this year. Right out, right out. And the raging hold, hold. Brownlow favourite is Martin. Unbackable favourite for the Brownlow. Although he is on two strikes at the match review panel this year. One more and it'll see a suspension and no Brownlow. And he's gone. He's put himself deep forward too now. So Hawthorne had a bit of trouble with that against Geelong when they just left that deep forward in Dangerfield. It really strings out their defence. So what does that do? It forces Sicily to play on him rather than... Yeah, so he's got to play right back. So now they defend as a group of five instead of a group of six. The thoughts of Scott Penelbury with us today is Rioli, Brand looking to flick it out to Harnwick, not successful, so he has to fight the war himself. So Dustin Martin has kicked the last two of the afternoon. Tigers 27 point lead at halftime is now 39. Smith, well, Edwards and Grigg were right on him. Floston, terrific to Miles, and here they go again. Preston measures the kick, not ideal in the end. Glass, Castagna, Tough bounce for the Irishman initially. Crucial time. Miles picks up the crumbs. Back to Castagna. Castagna from 40. Just going to... Well, maybe. Last line. Caddy. And he does play on and he does kick a goal. Richmond three in a row. Caddy's got two. A 
thought it was just over the line, but Caddy must have taken it cleanly right on the line. He gets his second, and suddenly there's a massive mountain for Hawthorne to climb if they're going to stay in their season. They haven't looked too lightly in this term. 2-6 to 9-9. Nine, nine. 18 scoring shots to 8 tells the tale. Mark on the goal line, but really it was the ball upfield where the again the Richmond speed, the ability to get into the space, support each other on the way through. Mitchell, the two threes there trying to extract the footy. Big lead for the Tigers. It really is a mountain for them to climb now, as you say. The Hawks 45 down. McAvoy crashing in Corey Ellis no winner so the Tigers have been nothing but likeable here today they can move up into third position on the ladder they could have also fallen, fallen out of the top four today if Port went on to win the showdown but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now you talk about being likeable, BT. They've had six losses for the year, four of them single-figure margins, just two hiccups. Adelaide in Adelaide and St Kilda on that Saturday night was most unlike them. Yep, exactly. And they've done an extremely good job here in the third quarter trying to bust this game open. Alice caught with the footy. That was Corey. Had to get it out the back door. And now the Hawks with a handball required here from Howe. Tried to paddle it on, got it to Gunston. Gunston fires in the handball, so they're under enormous pressure here. Bruce and the running smother will get big congratulations from his teammates there in Broad. Ben, Kobe, it's a the game, isn't it? When the defensive pressure Isaac, of Richmond, Hawthorne haven't been able to Isaac, break through ben, with any efficiency or effectiveness. Nathan Broad, just his fourth game this year. Sixth game... In total, a couple of la games late last year. Went to ground how. Pickup was clean enough by Henderson, but no wriggle room. Butler tried to get cute, work it on the outside of the boot inside 50. Smith was onto it, gets hold of the football, puts it in front of the running Sicily. Castagna just pushes him away from the football. Sicily has a bit of help. Jeray arrives, but immediately Greg was onto him. I think when you look at Richmond, though, a lot of it starts with their back six. They've been really, really solid. So when the opposition just can't break through, they're, they're smaller, quicks get upfield. And then on the turnover, they're able to run back better than most. Mitchell Clever went low to Isaac Smith and then quickly booted the ball. Ellis went to ground, but ball bounced back into his hands. Now, Bashahooli happy to retreat. And here's Asprey trying to get things going again for Richmond. Won seven of their last nine games, the Tigers, and this is why they're a danger. I mean, one of my favourites to go on and win it. A bit of momentum and anything can happen with the Tigers. If they go on to win today, which they probably will, they're one of only two sides in the comp that would have strung the last four wins together, and that is good momentum heading to September. Edwards in the middle with a ripping ball. Gives it on here to Lambert, run down by O'Brien from behind. You set it up. That was well done by O'Brien. He had a teammate on his own in front of him. He really just should have given it. You don't always get run down from behind, but you never know who is going to be on the, on your tail. Use the free play in front. You know what I'm meaning with the Tigers? If, yeah, they, yeah. if they can get the troops, crowds start to arrive, momentum can be a big thing in footy, and they're just starting to create a, a bit of that now, home. Absolutely. Big fly from Rance. It's going to stay in too. Caddy feeds it back. Broad, big smother in front of us moments ago. Asprey down the line, goes Prestia, Nankervis, bouncing ball, Lambert round the corner, bouncing ball again. Well, Grigg took him on Jaray, tackle was okay, Miles arrived, Watcross to it, Smith, Hooley, and then Grigg beaten to it, Prestia takes Sicily over. And Scotty, once you look after the win column enough, the little, the little things then start to matter, and you do those things well as you build towards finals, don't they? Yeah, and they'll get highlighted to the Richmond group every, every game they've played this year, how important all those little things are. And as you said, once momentum takes over, it's a beautiful thing. Hawthorne has swung Gunston forward here, and DeRay's gone back as well. 
So the Bulldogs, the other side that has been able to have a month of wins after getting out of jail against the Lions. Tigers trying to make it four in a row. Against the Hawks this afternoon, Rance. You're a better defender in the game at the moment, Scotty Pendlebury, than that man. His influence today has been huge. He's just controlled Hawthorne's forward line, just sitting in the last there, line, David controlling Moore. his defenders, putting them where he wants them. Um, 18 points Come against. On. Broad to Ellis, to Prestia, to Lambert. Now to Asprey. And he's got a runner, Lambert. Went low again, worked out pretty well too. Little move from Butler, just got held up and handball not as he would have liked to Lambert. It's almost like a dance move, wasn't it? A little shimmy. Very pretty. All three goals of the quarter going with the Tigers. Lead by 45, Mitchell. Rioli fired the handball into Caddy from 40 launches of beauty. No, he just misses. He was looking for goal number three. Interesting when we rolls available again because they'll obviously play one ruck, but I suspect they don't want to play even even if we rolls there, they'll only have him plus the one big ruckman. No wonder they're quick. Oh, so you reckon one will go out late? Well, I think that's what they normally do. They normally just like to really accentuate. The speed. Big chance here for the Tigers. Again, ferocious at the footy. The Hawks come up with the numbers at halfback. Gunston, well weighted ball. Henderson, clever, slaps it over the top. Here's a big chance for Hawthorne. Bruce runs inside 50, doesn't blaze away, weighs things up. Langford goes back with a flight of the ball. He'll line things up directly in front from about 40. Hasn't been a great set shot goal shooter in uh, recent times, uh, Langford. So I think everyone, including uh, young Will, will be holding the breath for this one. Well, Langford for the year. Six goals, 13 coming into the afternoon. One nine from set shots, home. Huh? That, that's why. So what is he now? One, well, that one nine there. and out of bounds on the full, and we don't know the others. Yeah, that's right. So it's something that you've got to be able to address in your game, I reckon. Yeah. That's, that's not a bad week or two. One nine and out of bounds on the fours. A rugged run. Basher Hooley sends it down the line. Soldo with the spoil, the knock of the arms. So he'll be penalised for that. And the Hawks immediately into Roughhead. Knocked away from him. Edwards trying to back out of the tackle. Broad. Try to duck under the tackle. Didn't oh, matter which ball, way he went, ball, Ruffy ball, had to wrapped up. Second tackle. Second tackle. Second tackle is going to get it. So Bruce claiming it. And he would probably think he's the more accurate kick anyway. And he'll get a look from a fairly severe angle, as you can see, starting his approach a metre inside the boundary. Bruce with a little bit of left to right tails, got it working the right way, but just fell short. Good kick. Goal umpire Chris Appleton there. The best goal umpire that we have in the business, I would think he'd be described as. I think he's done about 10 grand finals. Big CV, isn't it? Yep. Austin. Well, kick's got to be perfect, and it's not. Ran it fine, so Hawks get hold of the football. It'll be Connor Glass who sends the ball back into the hands of Harta. Lee, well, just coming into three-quarter time, you've only kicked two goals of the Hawks. Is it throwing the personnel around, or will you encourage them to, you know, just go for it, play a different game style? Well, Gunston a chance here. Somersault and then wrapped up. Lethal? Well, it's actually Thanks, get, who can get... I think Ruffhead, again, this situation of DeRay playing on ranch, I don't think that's worked at all. So maybe getting Ruffhead playing the deepest forward, at least making ranch conscious of him, because at the moment the uh, Richmond defence is just... Impenetrable. Mitchell will handball out, but the Tigers again have got numbers where they need to be. Tough in the end for Grigg. Off his leg, back to Ellis, into Miles. Picked off by Jeray. Looks inside, few options. Pleading for it with Shields. McIntosh in the end arrived, got a fist to it. Mitchell just holds the handball over the top. 
Connor Glass was quick and good. Shields, Miles, Hartung almost found his man, then clever slap towards Ruffhead. And again, the Tigers mop up. Always there applying pressure, weren't they? At every moment, but they're going to have to do it again because McAvoy goes backwards, finds Brand, and they'll go for the south side attack this time. Sicily, short ball, Isaac Smith will get on the bike and want to make some miles here, given the opportunity, does with a bounce. Now the beautiful kick to Burgoyne. Sean Burgoyne shouldn't doubt himself from here. Now, if I was the umpire then, I don't know why he just didn't call play on, because he was creeping around deliberately, but he gives him the benefit of the doubt. Set it up here. Gee, Rance might have got in the back. Umpire lets that go as well. Soccer out of midair. Taylor Miles has kicked the goal. So Miles kicks his second goal of the game. A good effort from the youngster. Came in to replace the former skipper in Luke Hodge. And he's done pretty well today, Taylor Miles. Boy out of the Geelong Falcons footy factory down there with Mickey Turner. Got his first in his career, gets his second there with quick thinking. Third game only. It's probably that uh, example of they don't want to knock the ball through from too far out and a good goal by Mike. But Jimmy asked about that point about Hawthorne scoring. The inside 50s are about the same. Now, there are only numbers, I know, but it's a field position indication. So Hawthorne are getting plenty of field position forward, but they just can't. They've three goals from 30 entries is just a terrible efficiency. So Taylor Miles gets his second goal in AFL football, set shot the first, quick thinking that for his second. Tigers win it out of the middle. Good one from Caddy. And McIntosh to a bit of space. Lambert again goes low with the handball. Tough and then Curvis to Ray the tackler. And Curvis somehow boot to ball. Not quite for Edwards. Brand, Sicily, Hawks. Try and work it out. Koch and print it to Butler. Bruce was the tackler. Sisley picked up, mopped up. Shields over the top. Miles kicked the last. Hawks trying to go back to back with goals for the first time. Burgoyne on the outer side. Looks nothing really doing. Happy to handball. Roughhead. Mitchell. Hartung. Got to take on Prestia. Didn't think he was quick enough. Now Roughhead. Roughhead long ball in. O'Brien over the top, almost had a piece of it. Gunston snap over the shoulder, missed. So Gunston, ever alert. Ball's flying everywhere down there. Three minutes left in the quarter. Tigers have dominated on the scoreboard. Three goals to one, and in terms of possession in forward half, probably the Hawks have had most of the possession. They haven't been able to capitalise. Hooley down the line. Soldo, the intended target there. And Burton, the only flyer. Such an impressive year from Burton. We know his troubles with his leg he'd been operated on the crows had a chance to take him the hawks took a gamble and absolutely he's right in provided he's been a huge pickup that, that kick there from burton going inside that's the kick that hawthorne have had trouble with all day can't get past rance asprey it's just like a brick wall down there so i think hawks got to try something different play on lower the eyes try and find a lead up target because that long kick's not working tigers led by 27 at half time lead by 38 now and the Hawks get one late here in the third. Cotchen beat Henderson to it. Slapped it towards Shields. Ends up with O'Brien. He pulls the kick. Dangerous spot. Floston did well. Brought it to ground. Now a collision is on. Edwards and Duray. Spills to Burgoyne. Couldn't take it cleanly. Edwards was brilliant. Now to Grigg. Weaves through traffic. Does unbelievably well. Asprey happy to feed it back. Richmond. With composure, McIntosh to board. So if they'd won it where they thought they were going to win it, then the Tigers, they would have been off in that attack mode. And this is why I like them, Scotty, because they've realised this is not an attack position. Remain composed. But they've done it really well, haven't they? They've still got a couple of forwards out the back, but everyone else is up high, ready to defend, you know, as that's where the ball's in, in that yeah. position of the ground. And, yeah, as you said, they're, they're playing a really good balanced brand of footy. 
The blend of that's been good. Luke Hodge, look, if the Hawks don't make the finals, which is probably unlikely if they go on and lose this game, he won't see the MCG again. So that'll be it for Luke Hodge in terms of the MCG. Martin, Grigg, and the Tigers in complete control with a minute 30 remaining in this third quarter. Fiddling around there, Butler, quick hands, glass. Maybe taken forward in the tackle. Was it Brand in the, underneath all of that? A lot Very of tattoos dangerous. there. Very Anderson. dangerous Richmond coming out of those stoppages with that forward handball. Forces Hawthorne defenders to squeeze up. Uh, and they just can't put any pressure on them. So ball up here. Sinar for the Tigers. Mitchell got taken high. Mitchell. We'll have the free immediately with a minute 12 to go. They need to get on their bikes and go here with this one. As Hartung finds Burgoyne. We know he's about his ball using ability. But what can he pick out? And amongst all of this goes the long ball. Roughhead's got a bit of a step ladder here and did the job as well. The ball was kicked in the perfect position by Burgoyne, allowing Roughhead to use Rance. Looks a lot better for Hawthorne with Rance having to pick up Roughhead than Rance having to pick up Duray. Exactly what Lee was talking about there before. And here is Roughhead now as a result of all of that. There's the task ahead. Haven't kicked consecutive goals all day, the Hawks, but they have now because Roughhead has just gone. Game 250 for the big fella and getting it done today. The 14th person at Hawthorne to play 250 games. They had a couple of shots from out on that angle, but Roughhead's finally nailed one. That's a fair margin, given that they're not scoring a whole lot, 32 points, but they have had a pretty good last 10 minutes. They, uh, which we got away early in the quarter, and now Hawthorne have just been nipping at their heels, just a couple of goals. They've had 10 of the last 12 inside 50s or something of that nature. Yeah, had so. good field position. That tells the tale, doesn't it? Ten of the last 12, and the margin just over five goals. So margin is 32. They've only got 32 next to their name on the scoreboard. But can the Hawks do what the Hawks have been able to do in recent years and pull off the unlikely? 9-10 to 4-8. Jared Ruffett gets his first of the afternoon. For the moment, they've stemmed the Tigers scoring. Burgoyne in traffic. Little kick off the ground, and now Lambert after the siren can get it back out to 38 points. He'll be kicking from 51, 52 metres. It's going gonna, it's gonna to test his length and his accuracy over that distance. It's clever by Hawthorne there to get rough head on the mark, make him kick it that extra couple of inches higher. So Lambert, he's given it everything. It's going to fall short. So three-quarter time, it is the Tigers. They lead it by 32 points. It's 9-10-64 to the Hawks, 4-8-32. Season. Richmond next weekend, Collingwood the weekend. Giants to finish. Yeah, well, it's a gigantic out, isn't it? He's a wonderful inspiration, the captain, so that's going to be a big out that they've got to cover, at least until the finals. That is big AFL news, Hayne. John Selwood gone for the home and away season, undergoing surgery on the ankle. Out of the middle, the Tigers, Cochin to Caddy. Caddy can turn line and go straight towards goal. Hits the timber work. You've been only coaching for three weeks, Scotty, but anything you do for three-quarter time for either side. I think what Hawthorne have done to try and get back in the game is have six forwards. They, had, they started with six forwards at the first centre bounce. Usually they had plus two off the back. That set of bounces in the first one. Richmond goes straight out the front door, straight at goal. So I think they've made the right move. It's just up to the inside mids to get the job done around the footy. Tigers by 33. Corey Ellis has got a couple for the afternoon. McAvoy, he's done since crossing over. 
filling that hole perfectly. Little kicks, dangerous ball intercepted by Ellis. Good read, good intercept. That little short kick up the middle, the ball's going to hang in the air just marginally, and Ellis just read it beautifully. So Corey Ellis has got a couple for the afternoon. Brandon hasn't kicked one yet. As Brian said earlier, 100th consecutive game for Brandon Ellis. Kick seven for the season. Tigers fans would love him to kick this. 9-12. Yeah, one of the other players, home, uh, Sean Burgoyne, he's got 101 chain of consecutive games going, playing here today. Tui of Geelong, 108, and Gibson, the most of any current player, at 126 Let's consecutive games for the Kangaroos. What? Big numbers. Pretty good consistency, isn't it? Short little boy here from Taya Miles, who's done quite well today. Mitchell had another 29 touches of the footy already in this game. Short ball, half time. Wants to pull the trigger. Sicily is standing, awaiting the arrival. It'll go back a little from where he was, and now he's demanding the footy forward. Over the head of him, it goes to Isaac Smith. Eventually in the hands of Sicily. Sicily looking to penetrate deep inside forward 50. O'Brien comes at the footy. Great movement from the Hawks. A rarity, though. Providing on the end of it, a set shot at goal. One of the rare occasions where Rance got caught a little bit in between, didn't know whether to come up to defend or drop back into the space. No, Brian, if he gets a leap at the ball, he's got good hands. O'Brien from 48 will miss across the face of the punt road goal. And the bounds in the full, in fact. So the pillar of Richmond's back six. Well, Grimes completely outnumbered, but somehow ends up with a football. Happy just to go with a short ball back inside to Asprey. Move it on, play on. A long one down the wing. Plenty of small tigers waiting for Nankervis to knock it down. He takes it himself. Around the corner he goes. Mitchell, Sicily, takes on Grigg, did well. Now Shields to Brand. And again, dangerous sort of a ball. Smith, Butler overcommitted. Worth taking the risk. And Smith, though, through the middle. Misses a few targets. And Glass cleverly off, well, out of the air, oh, yeah. off towards his skipper. Four metres. More than 15. That's his Gaelic background. Clever, wasn't it? Very clever. He's got 15 to one and a half goal squares, basically. That's about where you get your measurement. That was that was about 10, I reckon. That's the umpire is falling in love with the Irishman and realising it's Ruffy's 250th. Yeah, that's it. So Ruffy kicked the last of the third. And he's butchered it on the boot. Yeah, that's one too. He's, in, he's, he's skewed a couple out of Just bounds, back isn't here, he? Yep. Luke. Back another metre, please. He has. One more metre, Luke. The big Alex, rough, Alex, 250 Alex. games, well, great achievement for him though. Not going to be an incredibly happy celebration though on the end of this. Prestia, caddy, bit of a ball in hope there. Glass on the end of it, had to go a second time. Glass paddled it to Burton, to Henderson. Beautiful ball from Henderson, they can attack from this position. Taya Miles is told to run with the ball with Isaac Smith, but he's not making any ground. He was sort of grabbing it out wide. Needed to go a little more direct. Now he finds show and makers. Tried to sell a bit of foot candy. Had to settle on the right boot. Up they fly, Bruce. Him and Rance and Alice look at each other. And Hardwick says, could just one of you go? On his strength, of course, uh, Alice in his overhead marking contest. And 15 seconds. Just completely out, ran out, Luke then. By Bruce. So Luke Bruce. An absolute dead eye nails that. His first of the day. First goal of the last quarter with the Hawks, and they get it back to within 28 points. Now, hey, I know that I am a extreme optimistly, but 28 points 
with 15 minutes to but go. We have seen plenty of teams come from yeah. behind this year. That, that's the point. You just think the team behind can keep attacking. Quite often the team in front goes a little defensive. Had a good patch, Hawthorne. They were good That's late right. in the third That's quarter. Right. Richmond blew that shot at goal. Got the first uh, the first run. So all of a sudden, the margin starts to get gettable. Last three goals of the match. 46 points. The big margin for Richmond. Now just 28. Here they come again, the Hawks. Rough it to Burgoyne. Big names combining. Can they find a way to stay in season 2017? Too much in the end for Roughhead. Bruce... Offline, margin 27. Still 15 minutes on the clock. Looking a lot more dangerous, Hawthorne. Now they've got six forwards in front of the ball. And one of those being Burgoyne Pendle. It's just a little bit of creativity across the half forward line. And we know Make how sure. damaging he can be by foot. Makes you wonder, Scotty, why they don't play with that set up for the majority of the day. Inside 50 is heavily favouring the last 10 of them there. Seven or so with the Hawks at the moment. They're pressing again for another opportunity here. Luke Bruce with the tackle. Dispossessing McIntosh. Little handball out the back here looking for Grimes. He just burrows his way through a hole. And here they go on the counter-attack again. In the hands of the speedster Butler. Butts up. Kicks to Castagna. Needs a clean pick-up. Got it in the end. Little handball back to Butler. And Butler to Castagna. And they do it very nicely indeed, the Tigers. Ending with the caddy goal. Kick three. A settler for Richmond. Yep. Back out over five goals. Caddy gets his third. After the Hawks have got the previous three in it. Half forward for Hawthorne. The ball was bobbling around. If they could get their hands on it, you thought, well, wow, maybe a fourth and some real momentum. Yeah. What? But a lot of heat on the ball. You haven't had a lot of time when you've had it. Richmond then had half a dozen really quick handballs but set it up. That's the winners. A fantastic win from Grimes. And then they're off. It's a question. Can they actually maintain possession well enough? They've got a little bit of space. I mean, the, estimate, the Hawthorne pressure was there. But they got through it really well. Butler and Castagna, a couple of housemates, sharing the ball around as Roughhead gives it off to Hartung. Gets away from Broad. Man in the pocket is Burgoyne. Normally can work a miracle. Can he hear? Burgoyne, left boot, puts it to a dangerous spot. Schoenmakers beaten to it by Grimes. Hawley's got to be clean. Intercepted by Roughhead. Response coming? No. Asprey was there. It was offline. See, Ruff's willing his team to he is, get into yeah, the game, isn't yeah. he? He's doing his bit. New Burgoyne to get involved. They're playing deep at the moment, but I think he's the one. If he can get a bit of time and space around the middle of the ground, he can really be damaging. So... That's what they're going to need for him. Five touches in the nine minutes of this final quarter for Jared Roughhead already. Sicily. Completes the mark and pops it back into the hot zone. Now Brewster's down by himself here and he's going to take the mark. mark. So Brewster will get up with the, within easy conversion territory for him, I would have thought. Amazing, isn't it? It's a long high ball in. The forward's got a bit of space. The... The half a dozen yeah, Richmond there, defenders okay. in the vicinity looked like they just were covering holes. Didn't go on the end, but it was a low ball that really hung for a long time. To get it back to 26 points, he needs to kick this. No problems. Hawks are back within 26. He's second. Just feels slightly different this match to how it did about 25 minutes ago. Yeah. If since Hawthorne feel like they are an outside chance. Four goals and change. The margin right now. Still 13 minutes of football. Well, we've got four of the last five. Well, still a big chance. Don't worry about that. Plenty of time. 26 points. That was a Bruce. He's over the top. The Richmond defenders covered the space in between, but not that long, the long ball in. Bruce got both Hawthorne's goals in this last term. Hawks got four of the last five. Hawks need the next one, home. They yep. get the next one. It is absolute game on. Can they find a way? Can Clarkson pull out another miracle here at the MCG? Out of the air, in the middle. 
Martin to half four. Butler left it behind. Miles, who's been good, gave it off to Mitchell. Handball just impeded. He wanted hard tongue. He's almost run down. Brand left it behind. And now Glass is left to mop up. The Irishman sees it over the boundary line. Brand, I think, probably could have done it a little better. Mick Malloy, an anxious Tiger fan. Home Lee touched on Big Ruffy trying to wheel his team into the contest. He's put himself around the ball, was in that last centre bounce. Looking very happy with himself, Mick Malloy there. Snuggled in amongst uh, two of his friends. O'Brien. Henderson. Martin on the right. Won't get the length. Might get the bounce, though. Has it gone over the top? I think it has. Let's listen in. I believe it's a goal. I'd just like to see if a defender touched the ball. That's goal umpire Chris Appleton. Yeah. What do you want to go with the umpire's call? Uh, umpire's, umpire's call will be touched then. Umpire's yeah. call is touched. Oh. Yeah. This is so interesting. You, umpire's call is touched, one behind. Can you please make sure it was touched? Will you end the way? Changes things, doesn't it? I thought yeah. he said a goal initially. Yeah. Yeah. Change yeah. to touch, and if yeah. it's not conclusive... I'll let you know when it's time to go, all right? I, I agree with you. Now, is it touched here? There it is there. Look at the finger bend back on that. So it's touched off the boot, not on the line. I wonder which one they were looking at. Well, Caden Brand seemed adamant that someone touched it, whether he's playing he did or well, if they go, off. If they, Daniel Howe. If they go back to that first angle, there's no finger there, though, is there? Doesn't, doesn't look like very hard to turn it over from what is the finger off the boot. So is there a finger there? It's a tough one. Doesn't look like it. I think it'll be overruled. Just wait. Review completed. Decision on scoreboard. Just wait, James. Okay, James, you're right. Well, what did you see that Stay I didn't? Behind. Well, the last, the last piece, is that the one, Scotty, you think they made the decision on? I think that last bit of vision we've seen there showed his middle, fin middle finger bending back a little bit. Of Caden Brand, is it enough to save their season? Dustin Martin trying to put an exclamation on this one. Prestia on the end of it, bouncing through. Seven-point play. So disappointment 20 seconds ago, quick response. Yes, it was. Uh, well, really, it's inconclusive vision, so they go with the umpire's call. That's the that's the way it uh, that's the way it blew. But yeah, it was a seven-point play. It wasn't planned clearly, but the uh, they went down the middle, Hawthorne. They tried to actually go really, really attacking late in the game. They hit the ball back. see it all to tack the ball there for Martin but the Sobo who hit the ball back make sure the ball doesn't get over the top that's what Richmond had to do and they knocked the ball back into their in their forward 50 space McAvoy out of the middle did I just see an extra go back for the Tigers Scotty or not he did they've got seven back now because obviously Hawthorne this quarter went six six forwards six backs I think Richmond said enough's enough we'll roll one in behind been heavily criticised, I think was it earlier this year, Home for not getting a number or two back. And they had that tight run of losses, didn't they? Yep. And got one back now here, as Scotty has mentioned. Shields, long handball, but I tell you what, the Tigers are going to jump on this, although a bad bounce for Ashbury. Rant's come through, will need to get rid of it. That's a throw. Gone. Free kick showing makers. Need to get rid of it. There. Got to pin the one arm tackle and that's nowhere to go. Yep, good tackle, wasn't it? That's the one you want to see, Lee, where he's nice and kind to him. <laughs> the tackle. A gentle tackle, Peter. It doesn't hurt him. <laughs> Show and makers from 35 out. And he's got it bending the right way. He's kicked his second. You're a lateral thinker, lethal, but heads on tackle bags. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what we're saying is you've got to pin the player's arms. That is the good tackle, but taking them to ground and bouncing the head off the turf, that's been deemed to be uh, something you're not supposed to do. So the 
when you put the head on the tackle bag, it just gives you a sense of, well, there's a head there, don't hurt it. What do you make of it all now, Lee? Live ladder. Well, Richmond, if they can keep going to consolidate themselves right up the top, got the break on Geelong. Uh, they're really in a hunt for the top two now, aren't they? Well, it's fascinating, isn't it? Their run next week has changed completely this afternoon with the news that Joel Selwood won't be playing against the Tigers next weekend or for the rest of the home and away season. So the Tigers have got Geelong, as you say, next week, Fremantle and St Kilda to finish it off. The Fremantle one is over there in Perth. And the Saints back here. Yeah. So the Saints to play the Tigers in the last round. One of Richmond's only two hefty losses came against the Saints. Yeah, what's been a good contest, the Prestia Mitchell matchup there. Has certainly been a shutdown. Mitchell's got plenty of the ball, but so's Prestia. So it's really, I reckon, line ball who's been best out of that, that pairing in, in terms of effectiveness in the game. Mitchell's hands again lightning. Henderson involved a couple of times and then. Long ball for three Tigers about the place. Nothing really doing for Hawthorne other than Gunston, but Richmond have the numbers. McIntosh on the end of the Rance handball. Happy just to go for some territory. A couple of one-on-ones at the back. Dustin Martin, he's got some options. Caddy might put it over the top. He does. And Richmond, Martin on miles. Can you believe that? The Irishman. He was thinking about giving it back to Martin. I believe it's a goal. I'd like to check Dustin Martin got his boot to it. We saw the play. We saw the Hawthorne. This is the one on the goal line. Yeah, no, I reckon it's come off glass. Elbow. He's kicked it into his elbow. Review underway. The umpire's called the goal. I reckon it changes direction off the elbow of yeah. on a glass. Yeah, I think so too. Off the back of the elbow. Yep. Yep. So that'll definitely be a behind here. Review completed, decision on scoreboard. Hawthorne fans having a little win. Connor Glass, quick thinking, came from the side, knocked him off his line, Miles, and then Martin couldn't get a boot to it, but it was all about being too unselfish there, wasn't it? Well, they had about four options, and no one was happy to take the job on. Hawley took a couple of hawks on. In the end, Ellis takes on Langford. Too long, holding the ball, advantage. 28 points, the margin. Shields waits for the bouncing ball. Butler attack the footy. Edwards, Ellis, two of them, in fact. Corey and Brandon watching on. Just under 10 minutes of football left. Hawthorne season on the line. They need five goals. It is unlikely, but it is Hawthorne. And they do have that man in charge. Not much that he can do from here, though. I would have thought it's all about probably the players now. Whether they can find something. Castagna spinning pirouette. Got it to Martin. Martin looking for the low ball inside. It's been marked by Henderson. So they're just getting it and going now, the Hawks. High ball looking for Whitecross, did well. Brandon Ellis doesn't allow him to play on. Goes in the middle, beautiful kick to Roughhead. Long handball shield, long handball over the top to Howe. He's able to run, give the little handball back to Henderson and all of a sudden they are stopped in going forward with that very, very high ball. McIntosh and Hartung go at it. Hartung will need to get rid of it. He took it over the boundary line. Fine. Now Paul Smith says, throw it in. I'm not sure why Hawthorne didn't go in there with Howe. They had even three on three in front of the ball. Go in and back in your forwards there. Instead of going there, ended up wide out on the wing. And just, you know, we end up might, at a stoppage out here. Might have been spooked by uh, Richmond's defence today, Scotty. Every time they have gone in one-on-one, -on -one, the Richmond defence has pretty much come out with it. Richmond, off Richmond. Off Richmond. High fend off Richmond. Probably hard to argue. I think Tom Mitchell was pleading for the football, but when you go back and have a look at Corey Ellis's face, it's hard to argue it wasn't a high fend off. <laughs> yeah. 
bit of high contact. So, oh, yeah, right in the point of the elbow. That hurts. Thing you don't need with eight minutes to go. No. Accidental contact. Got to wait for the player that comes on to replace him to be in the position that he's happy with, that is, the player is happy with, before the umpire is allowed to restart play. So Caddy has the footy at half back. And at the moment, players are really evenly spread across well, two thirds of the ground, which is unusual in itself. And here the umpires communicating with each other there. So Caddy for Brandon Ellis, put him under the pump, but he's able to absorb. He goes short, barely the required journey to Greek. Now, why was he asked to play on then? Scotty, it's been happening all weekend, that one, and he didn't actually take a step off his mark. I think sometimes you get called to play, and if you look, yeah. it's not the right thing. You've got, you've got to give the player the benefit of the doubt, and every player has a look. That has happened a lot that this weekend, Home. Hey? I was watching the game on Friday that you were doing, and it happened there as well. A couple of times players were called. I think Scott Selwood on one occasion. Well, Sicily, terrific hands. We know he's got great hands, and he's doing it a lot for the Hawks now at halfback. Terrific kick over the top, finds Hartung. What can the Hawks do here? Leading the race is Bruce. Kicked a couple in this term. They've kicked three, the Tigers two. Margin at three-quarter time, 32. Margin 28 now. Shields, hemmed in, long ball inside 50. O'Brien with the height, in front spot, roughhead. Ellis, crumbed it well. Hooley, Lambert, Floston. And a ugly sort of a ball for, for Stagner. Handles it well, gives it to his housemate in Butler. Nothing really doing. Continues just to roll. Miles corrals him. Butler back to Grigg. And the little one inside. Cochin and Martin rolling together for the moment. Martin will end up with the football. Gets to about 55, puts it into the pocket. Delivered perfectly to Butler. He didn't have a lot of room for error, Martin. He had to put it over the top of the Hawthorne defender and not too far. Or he's out of bounds on the full. Yeah, it was a great kick and great work rate by Butler. He was a player running the ball up on the wing, had nothing to kick to, had to wait, showed great composure, fed back, then gets it. You know, keeps working forward of the play and gets on the end of it. Circles round Butler. He's put it across the face. So perfect service from Martin to Butler. Butler's normally the one performing those duties. So Hawks now going to find five goals. Not Season done. on the brink. Yeah, probably done. Done here, I would have thought now, but Grimes... Got met solidly by Isaac Smith, and once he gets the ball in line, there's just no deviating for Grimes. Is exactly what you want as part of a strong defence. Floston. Short ball to Bashar Hooley. Hooley can go short to Cochin if he wants. That's now closed down and brings it out wide towards Martin. Grigg was able to mark. 55 from home here, Grigg. Tigers have done well. They kicked five goals to one in the first quarter to set this up. And from that very point in time, they haven't really been absolutely threatened. They've looked like a side that belongs in the top four, really, haven't they? Yeah. And they're going to finish round 20 in third spot, the highest-ranked Victorian side. They haven't done that after round 20 since 1982. So if you're a Richmond faithful... You're getting excited about what lies ahead. Dustin Martin. He's a long kick of the football, and then Curvis stands tall. Really smart play by Richmond now. They chewed up about 40, 50 seconds of clock, just moved the ball around. I think sides often wait for the last two minutes of a game to do that. They did it five minutes to go, move the footy around, nothing on, long to your Ruckman, takes a grab. They've just chewed a minute off the clock. Big nag, certainly a cult hero already at Richmond. The crowd noise when he took the mark was incredibly loud. Just an update on Ellis. They put the blockers up his nose just to stop the bleeding. They'll look at, at it after the game. So Nankervis last week, three goals, one at the moment. Just a couple of behinds next to his name. 
He's got a major. The Tigers are absolutely home. And the Hawks are done. It was going to take everything in this last month to go right for Hawthorne. And this was the biggest of the hurdles. But it is going to be a Richmond win. And Hawthorne will miss finals. They've finished with the Western Bulldogs on a Friday night. Even if they win the remainders, 11 and a half, the best they can muster. So Luke Hodge's extraordinary run of games here at the MCG has now officially come to an end. There will be no more. They play in Launceston next week. And their last two games will be at Eddie Head Stadium. 149 games, I think he's etched out here. Lee, with four minutes to go as a coach, would you bring Dustin Martin off after we heard the news of Joel Selwood and his ankle injury? <laughs> you, you would be tempted now, I guess, but uh, we know how it works, Jimmy. The rotation of interchange means you've got to shoot, spare the load, so I guess you've just got to take the punt. 149 games for Hodgie, 90 wins here at the MCG. Edwards, Rioli, Lambert, Martin... Left foot, a high ball. Here go the Tigers again. Grigg wants to get back on the left. He's got a goal square operator. G was slow getting it there. And in the end, made the skill error as well down the throat of Burton. Wow. You'd love to see Hodgie on the G one more time, wouldn't you? I mean, the gladiator, and this is his Coliseum. No. No more. Yes, but it's not going to happen, yeah. is it? Yeah, they've had a great couple of months, Hawthorne, to fight their way back, but one would think this loss eliminates them now. The most they can get to is 11 and a half wins, and that doesn't look like it's going to be anywhere near enough. The sides above them would have to just about all they play each other, so someone's got to win some of those games. He's done some remarkable things on this ground. He has. So Nankervis and McAvoy have fought bravely all day. Burgoyne has... Been remarkable all his career. Broad leads Smith to the race. Broad takes it cleanly. Smith, attack was good. Broad got rid of the football. Bruce, he was held without it. He's kicked two goals in this turn already. Go through. Straight back to him, Nub. Straight back to him. Here. Luke, you got to come around on the angle now. Luke! If you had it. Luke! Time back on now. You're on the line. Mate, Bruce sees something he likes. And then Daniel Howe. Tricky spot. Clever Scott of Luke Bruce not to take possession of the footy. He's an incredibly smart player, isn't he? And, um, you know, you probably back him in, though. Having a shot from, from where he was is such a dead eye. So Daniel Howe on the left, around the body. And a cigar. Did a pretty good job on Martin for most of the game, but as the game's worn on, Martin has just kept getting stronger and stronger. He's up to 20 kicks, 10 hand balls, a couple of goals, the normal... A normal, really effective day. One of the one of the very best players on the ground again. He just has been so consistent this season, hasn't he, Martin? Dion Prestia. Out wide. Shields able to manoeuvre himself into a marking position. Game 161 for him. Long, deep ball. Rance setting himself to spoil this over the back was Mitchell. Did well. And the composure to just dribble him out the back was superb. Such a clever and smart player. Mitchell, he's had 34 touches of the footy here today. And uh, he's done very, very well. Got a bit of... So the Tigers, who have their 13th win, their run home sees them play Geelong, Fremantle and the MCG over the next three weeks. So you'd think there's at least one win there for them. Get them to 14 wins. and Yeah, and it, they're, they're all... Uh, Fremantle in Perth are always tough to beat. St Kilda going OK in Geelong, but they could win all three. Uh, on the form that they're displaying, they'd be... Maybe not against Geelong and Geelong. You're never hard to tip anyone against Geelong and Geelong, but you tip them in the other two. Does help with no Joel Selwood at the moment. Here goes the ball through the middle. Quickly to Miles, and then 
The kick was okay, not to the advantage of Castagna. He slipped it the wrong moment, and easy pickings in the end for Caden Brand. But Brand's ball, tough for Shields. Sicily did well, read it off hands, and then feeds the handball. Smith, he lost his feet too. Just joined us was heavy rain before the game got underway. It's been slippery underfoot. McIntosh clever. Grimes, Rioli, brilliant. Sort of Rioli-esque in the end. And then Lambert went searching at half forward. Nothing doing. Jeray, Burgoyne. A bounce. And now a second. Through the circles. Long ball inside 50. Bruce the target again. Might be able to conjure something. He will. The Hawks should get another. The milestone man. 250 for Ruffy. He gets another, and it's back to 23, but too little too late. So Richmond will win, and they'll finish the round in third. Six losses for the year, four of them single-figure margins. One they've, had a, they've had a very good year. They've been, they were OK, weren't they, in the, the what, 14, 15, then all of a sudden they had a bad 16. But they've certainly, uh, they've certainly bounced back. Look, they lost to Adelaide by 76. The other bad loss was, which I reckon was an aberration, a few weeks ago against the Saints when they yeah, were Yeah, a real shocker. Yeah. Pole axe in the first half. They actually outscored them in the second half. You almost put a line through yeah, that. you night. do. That was an aberration, wasn't it? So they are thoroughly deserving of the position that they're currently in, the Tigers. Worked hard to earn it. And now going to get an opportunity to take it further forward. Rioli with beautiful hands. Caddy Walsh is in. And the Tigers get another. Four goals for Caddy. We've always spoke about uh, when Rioli and Garoppolo were both in form, Scotty, and playing well. The Hawthorne must be very nervous defenders. But those small forwards group that uh, Rioli and Co. Whenever you get the ball on the ground level down in the, uh, any defensive, you're going to be a bit nervous, I reckon. They're on you quick. Very quick, aren't they? And I've, I actually don't think I've seen the Hawthorne defenders fumble as much on the ground as they have today, miss handballs, and it's all from that pressure and that perceived pressure. So do you think that's sustainable in finals footy, Lee? That... Well, no, I think it is. I think it's still about speed. I mean, you play with what your strength is, and sometimes they haven't got, they haven't got much marking power, so Rewild is obviously their one marking target. I think you go with what you're good at, which is, uh, which is speed and quickness. Caddy kicks his fourth. And the Tigers lead by 29 as Brand jostles for the football. Caddy puts on the tackle again. Takes him to ground. Gets rid of it somehow. Martin tackled from behind. Little slap in the Lambert direction. Burton's there. Caddy's had a big afternoon. Richmond. They came in. There was some question marks over whether or not they could get it done without Jack Revolt against this resurgent Hawthorne side, but they've been brilliant this afternoon. They'll win again at the MCG. Just six losses for the year. Before the kick. So Before Richmond the kick. win. They sit in third. The Hawks' season runs aground. And the yellow and black army are roaring. <laughs>